strangely enough, it was the right thing to say. James was saying he cared about Poppy, and weird as it might sound, Phil had come to trust James to tell the truth. The raging red insanity in Phil's brain died away. He took a long, deep breath. Okay, I understand, he said hoarsely. He was used to being in charge, both of himself and of other people. He didn't like James giving him orders, but in this case, there was no help for it. But she is dead, isn't she? It depends on your definition, James said, letting go and slowly pushing himself off the floor. He scanned the living room, his mouth grim. Nothing went wrong, Phil. Everything went just the way it was supposed to, except for this. I was going to let your parents come back and find her, but we don't have that option now. There isn't any way to explain this mess, except the truth. The truth being? that she went in there and found her dead and went berserk. And then I called your parents. You know what restaurant, what, what restaurant they're at, don't you? It's Valentino's. My mom said they were lucky to get in. Okay, that'll work. But first we have to clean up the bedroom, get all the candles and stuff out. It's got to look as if she just went to sleep like any other night. Phil glanced at the sliding glass door. It was just getting dark. But then Poppy had been sleeping a lot these last few days. We'll say she got tired and told us to go watch TV, he said slowly, trying to conquer his dazed feeling and be clear-headed. And then I went in after a while and checked on her. Right, James said with a faint smile that didn't reach his eyes. It didn't take long to clear out the bedroom. The hardest thing was that Phil had to keep looking at Poppy, and every time he looked, his heart lurched. She looked so tiny, so delicate-limbed, a Christmas angel in June. He hated to take the stuffed toys away from He hated to take the stuffed animals away from her. She is going to wake up, isn't she? He said without looking at James. God, I hope so, James said, and his voice was very tired. It sounded more like a prayer than a wish. If she doesn't, if she doesn't, you won't have to come after me with a stake, Phil. I'll take care of it myself. Phil was shocked and angry. Don't be stupid, he said brutally. If Poppy stood for anything, if she stands for anything, it's for life. Throwing your life away would be like a slap in her face. Besides, even if it goes wrong now, you did your best. Blaming yourself is just stupid. James looked at him blankly, and Phil realised that realised they'd managed to surprise each other. Then James nodded slowly. Thanks. It was a milestone, the first they'd ever been on precisely the same wavelength. Philip felt an odd connection between them. He looked away and said briskly, Is it time to call the restaurant? James glanced at his watch. In just a few minutes. If we wait too long, they're going to have they're going to have left by the time we call. That doesn't matter. What matters is that we don't have any paramedics try to resuscitate her or taking her to the hospital, which means she's got to be called by the time anybody gets here. Phil felt a wave of dizzy horror. You're a cold bloody snake after all. I'm just practical, James said wearily, as if speaking to a child. He touched one of Poppy's marble white hands where it lay on the bedspread. All right, it's time. I'm going to call. You can go berserk again if you want to. Phil shook his head. He didn't have the energy anymore, but he did feel like crying which was almost as good, crying and crying like a kid who was lost and hurt. Get my mum, he said thickly. He knelt on the floor beside Poppy's bed and waited. Poppy's music was off and he could hear the TV in the family room. He had no sense of time passing until he also heard a car in the driveway. Then he leaned his forehead against Poppy's mattress 
His tears were absolutely genuine. At that moment, he was sure he'd lost her forever. Brace yourself, James said from behind him. They're here.